SoFi stock price is currently in the dumps. Apparently, it's opposite day for companies with solid fundamentals. There is a silver lining, however. Like a slingshot getting pulled back before launching an object to the moon, the same can be said about SoFi and its upside. Assuming what SoFi CFO Chris Lapointe said still holds true. SoFi is growing, whether in members, products, or figures. In our video, SoFi stock in 10x in three years, SoFi CFO Chris Lapointe reveals secrets. We discussed why we thought SoFi stock could hit $157.92 a share by 2020. 2025, assuming the revenue estimates Crystal Point gave for SoFi hold true. So far, SoFi has either hit guidance or beat. So when they say something, they typically either do it, do it, just do it or do better than expected, which as a SoFi investor ourselves, with SoFi being our largest position by far, is definitely nice to see. Although the student loan extension is definitely a short-term issue, we don't believe it will really affect SoFi in the long term. In this video, we will go over quick projections of what the return on SoFi would look like, assuming all the information in the Chris Point video still holds true. For those of you who don't know what that means, make sure to watch that video after this one of course, link for that will be in the description. We'll give you a hint, the potential returns could be almost similar to what Tesla did in 2020. Real quick though, we are not financial advisors and this is not financial advice, so always do your own due diligence or doo-doo. Also, for you hardcore SoFi investors out there, we're launching our SoFi Focus Patreon on April 20th at exactly 4.20 p.m. California time, or if you want to get technical, PDT. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point, we've created well over 130 videos on SoFi since the IPOE days. So if you want to know our price targets, buy ranges, and see our entire SoFi position and other stock positions, and lastly, even our personal watch list, then be on the lookout for Patreon coming on 420 at 420. It will only be open until April 30th because we want to keep it small as this will be our first time opening Patreon. So make sure you don't miss it. Without further ado, let's get into the five reasons why we think so if I could 10x or more by the end of 2025. First things first, let's just take a look at the stock price projections from our previous video according to the information SoFi CFO Chris Point gave and using the price to sales ratios of other similar fintechs. Our base case puts SoFi share price at around $63.98 a share by end of 2025. Our base case puts SoFi at $137.66 a share by the end of 2025. Lastly, our bull case in that video put SoFi stock price at a whopping $157.92 a share by the end of 2025. SoFi's new all-time low was $7.64 a share. That means if the bull case comes true, by the end of 2025, that would mean a roughly 20x return in roughly three years. With a 20x return, if you invested $100,000, that could result in it turning into $2 million. Ladies and gents, that's Lambo money. But anyways, let's get into the five reasons why we think SoFi could 10x by the end of 2025. Number five, the bank charter will take a full swing soon. Just unfortunately not today. For a very long time, we were all super excited when SoFi finally got its bank charter. With this excitement came a lot of high expectations and sometimes we can be disappointed if our expectations don't exactly match reality. The stock price Listen, is plummeting. In the short term, it may seem like all odds are against us and we may even feel like SoFi will be down forever, but that's just not the case. With the solid fundamentals SoFi has, it's nearly impossible for SoFi to stay this low in the long term. But let's try to take a look and see what we can really expect from the bank charter and when it's going to affect from a headwind to a tailwind. After all, Rome wasn't built in a day, they say and you don't track your weight right after working out hours to see if your belly rolls are gone. Do you? So far, I used two key strategies to get ahead of the curve. One called blitzscaling and the other financial productivity service loop. With blitzscaling, put in a ton of work up front to secure the bag for the future. The financial productivity services loop helps them get more efficient as it adds more products and services while simultaneously boosting profit. It's still a work in progress, but they've gained a massive competitive advantage over the other fintech players out there. SoFi is the first to score a bank charter as a full service fintech startup and also 
it got featured in Time Magazine and was called one of the most dominant disruptors across the industry. CFO Chris LaPointe said that the bank had just opened up back in February and SoFi went all out with cash to fund the bank. That's how you start a business though, right? Am I right or am I right? Or am I right? But the difference is, SoFi is already thriving, and this is just another big step towards the dream. Once SoFi Bank originates and funds loans from the strategy that they're planting day by day, they get to realize lower cost of capital benefits of being a bank. Number four, Technicis and Galileo will boost more innovation for SoFi. It's a payment processor into the debit and ACH networks. In addition to that, it provides software through APIs to allow partners to build their applications uh, in a seamless way uh, and really in a turnkey fashion. Um, as our partners at, at Galileo begin to think about more products, they need more products and services. But guess what? The products and services that people that partner with Galileo need are the same products and services that SoFi needs. And so as a company, we currently have four products that all run on four different core technologies. Uh, checking and savings runs on a core technology from a partner, it's called Profile. Um, our invest product runs on a different core with a different partner, and our credit card runs on a different core with a different partner. We knew over time for us to get to the next level of best of breed product, the next level of personalization and innovation, next level of real-time decisioning, we would need to have one unified core. And so we're in the marketplace looking for one unified core and debating whether to partner with somebody or build it ourselves. Uh, we found Technosys and a couple of other companies like Technosys and ultimately came to the conclusion that Technosys was the best partner for us to build one unified core across our borrow, saving and spending products. Um, the more work we did with Technosys and the more we started to understand the technology, uh, we realized that it would serve SoFi well, but it also would serve all Galileo's partners incredibly well as they want to add more products. As you can see, the potential that Galileo and Technicis will have for the future is massive. SoFi is eyeing a lifetime relationship with their market. It's called securing the bag. Now, this beast collab leads us to our next point. Number three, vertical integration will be the trend. While everyone else is busy competing with others, some are keeping their enemies closer by buying them out, which is called horizontal integration. And some companies that are doing this are Facebook and how they acquired Instagram and even Walt Disney Corporation. But for SoFi and even the techno kings Tesla, both are hitting the jackpot as they choose to fight clean and just slash costs by partnering with the best in the business. The Galileo is a payment processor into the debit and ACH networks. In addition to that, it provides software through APIs to allow partners to build their applications uh, in a seamless way uh, and really in a turnkey fashion. Um, as our partners at, at Galileo begin to think about more products, they need more products and services. But guess what? The products and services that people that partner with Galileo need are the same products and services that SoFi needs. And so as a company, we currently have four products that all run on four different core technologies. Uh, checking and savings runs on a core technology from a partner, it's called Profile. Um, our invest product runs on a different core with a different partner and our credit card runs on a different core with a different partner. We knew over time for us to get to the next level of best of breed product, the next level of personalization and innovation, the next level of real-time decisioning, we would need to have one unified core. And so we're in the marketplace looking for one unified core and debating whether to partner with somebody or build it ourselves. Uh, we found Technosys and a couple of other companies like Technosys and ultimately came to the conclusion that Technosys was the best partner for us to build one unified core across our borrow, saving and spending products. Um, the more work we did with Technosys and the more we started to understand the technology, uh, we realized that it would serve SoFi well, but it also would serve all Galileo's partners incredibly well as they want to add more products. Number two, SoFi is a few steps closer to the world. If you want to know where Captain Noto is taking SoFi in the coming years, let's take a look at this clip. Um, here are the growth drivers. First is the growth of accounts of our existing partners. So that's the 100 million that we reported this quarter of enabled accounts. That continues to grow from existing, uh, existing partners. That 100 million accounts that are enabled, um, we can provide new products and services to that installed base of Galileo's partners. Um, and we have a very robust pipeline to add new products and services to the existing accounts. Things like secure debit, dynamic fraud protection, 
um, and a number of other products that you'll see us introduce throughout the year. Um, so the first driver is the growth in those accounts. The second driver on top of that is new products against those accounts. And then, of course, underlying all of that is just the increased activity within each one of those accounts. The second sort of bucket of drivers is growth of new partners. Some of the new partners we announced there are a good example. H&R Block with the uh, consumer app called Spruce is an example of a new partner. And we added 44 new partners, entirely new partners, in 2021. Uh, the third growth driver is international. Um, we have four of the largest neobanks as partners in Mexico. We're expanding into Colombia. And now on the back of the acquisition of Technosys, we can enter another 12 markets that they're already in and operating in. Um, so international expansion uh, is another bucket. And within that bucket are the first two buckets as well. Um, and the last thing I'd say is that we continue to diversify our relationships. Um, the business was built on the back of B2C or consumer neobanks. But increasingly, we're much more attractive to enterprise businesses, and we'll have a competitive advantage in some of these cases. Enterprise businesses use commercial bins, while SoFi also has, also has a bank. We remember just featuring SoFi in one of our videos when it just started setting foot in Hong Kong. And now, they're entering Colombia. SoFi's plan for global expansion is in full effect, as it plans to completely dominate. SoFly is really growing up. Oh. Lastly, number one, digital banking is the future and SoFi will rule over the fintech industry. According to sources, there's an increase in consumer demand for digital banking services, which led to many technological advancements like artificial intelligence, including our tech-savvy SoFi, which is innovation as a core strategy. We live in a digital age where everything is transitioning over from the traditional way of doing things. While legacy banks are busy being boring with their brick-and-mortar branches, SoFi is putting a lot of sweat into making extra moves out there to serve the underserved. And Forbes said that legacy banks are slow and and that the bigger they are, the slower they are to keep up with changing time. According to data provided by the SNP Global Market Intelligence, SoFi was down by about 17.5% last month. But it's not only SoFi that's taking the hit of the sell-off, because the life of the growth and bank stock are also on the line. And we here at Wealth Gambit are not selling a single share of SoFi. As we learned from 2020, everything can change in an instant. Even though SoFi showed huge potential to retail investors after releasing their full year earnings last month, all of it came screeching to a halt when the interest rate hikes and Ukraine-Russia conflict caused some fear and panic. But Grandpa Buffett once said, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. What sort of triggered your desire to, to talk about this? Yeah, first, full disclosure, SoFi is in the business of student loans, so we get impacted by this indecision, but that's not the motivation. SoFi is gonna be fine either way. We had record revenue in the third quarter. We had record revenue again in the fourth quarter. We achieved over a billion dollars of revenue in all of 2021 and our first full year of, of profitability on an EBITDA basis, all while the federal student loan program has been on hold. The reason why we decided to take a leadership position is someone needs to lead from the front. Someone needs to be a voice of reason to the administration and help them understand the pain and suffering that they're causing by their indecision. Did you hear that? SoFi is breaking records even with this negativity surrounding the business. On top of that, we haven't even begun to see the benefits of the bank charter play out. But when that happens, the lower cost of capital will boost SoFi's revenue and hopefully SoFi's valuation with it. The marketplace will reflect the true value of our favorite stock, at least in the long term. Although we've made over a hundred videos going through SoFi in detail, there's still so much to cover and we think the potential of this company stretches further further than what most investors are seeing in the short term. Again, just like Tesla in its early days, the people who believed in the company and held through the dark times eventually came out with returns that absolutely crushed the S&P 500. SoFi is moving on the right track, and even with the macroeconomic factors affecting the business, Captain Noto and the SoFi team are surely ready to come out stronger than ever. For those of you who are hungry for more SoFi content, make sure to check out our Patreon, which will be dropping on 420 at 420. California time. In there, we will reveal our entire SoFi portfolio along with our price targets and buy ranges. Also, of course, we'll have a SoFi private Discord chat so we can stay in touch with our fellow Sofian soldiers in the trenches. Be sure to look out for that. But anyways, guys, if you got any value from this video whatsoever, please be sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm 
and subscribe if you haven't already. That about wraps it up for today's video. If you're long SoFi and excited for what 2025 has to offer, comment long SoFi 2025 in the comments down below. Anyways, let us know your thoughts on this video. And until next time, peace.